What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video today. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you my entire collection. So I think I'm going to make this a biannual series. Um, I'll probably be having it every May and every December, so it'll be a little bit offset from uh, what Aviation 18 does with his uh, biannual complete collection videos, because I think he does it every... It's every November, and then I think it's every April, if I... Yeah, every every November and every April, and then vice versa. But you, you, get, you get what I'm trying to say. So, my collection has obviously grown in the seven months since I did the uh, first, or the previous installment, because I think the first time I did this is way back in 2018, and my collection was maybe, I don't know, a third of what it is now. So... You can tell the shelves are quite full, and I will definitely definitely need another set of shelves uh, to accommodate the, what is it, like 14 new models I'm getting this Christmas, so uh, stay tuned for that unboxing. They'll be coming out probably on Christmas Day or the day after, depending on when I get the video finished, but I may have other plans that will probably consume most of my time, so it'll probably come out later. So we'll start off here at the bottom shelf, and then we will uh, work our way up to the top. So again, it's pretty much sort of the same as before. The uh, bottom shelf is mostly, it's just exclusively wide bodies. Middle shelf is kind of like a mix of things, a lot of retro airliners, some wide bodies, some current aircraft, etc., etc. And then up here at the top is all of the current narrow bodies that I, that I am actively using in my model airport updates. Once again, lighting is going to probably suck because of the shadow and everything, and, you know, this uh, shelf isn't properly lighted. There is a light up here at the top, but I don't think it functions because this shelf is, I don't know how old, it's like 50 plus years old. Um, so I, don't, I really don't know if that's going to function properly. So, so what I got is a trusty lantern. I got it from a Runnings for, it was a pretty cheap... Price. Um, I think it was like maybe five to ten dollars or something, but I'll kind of show you here. Let's pull it up, and there you go. Lights up everything, and should provide me with much better lighting, so that way you guys can see my collection a bit better in this video. Starting off over here, we have a Qantas Airbus A380. I got this back in, I think, like 2014 or something. Um, the model has suffered damage because my cat knocked it over off of a table quite a few years ago, so um, that's really the only time he's damaged any sort of model. We have an American Airlines 747-100. I think this thing is quite rare from what I know, and many collectors would want this, so sorry about that. Delta 777-200, this model has suffered some damage, I think. Uh, one of the landing gears fell off. I don't know how it really did, but I'm going to try and get that fixed at some point. British Airways 777-200ER, ER. this is the 2015-ish release, and maybe 20, it's actually like 16 or something. Um, this is also rare as well. KLM 7879 Dreamliner. I got this when I was visiting Minneapolis quite a few years ago, um, and coincidentally, KLM started flying this aircraft to Minneapolis not too long after. Move up over here a bit. Move the lantern out of the way. Uh, WestJet 767-300. WestJet has sadly retired these for reasons probably related to the current situation and I guess other things. Also probably because they have the 787 in their fleet. Uh, FedEx 777 Freighter, this is an older release so it does have a bit of a different mold. So you can kind of see down there one of the wheels is missing. So. Uh, my oldest Gemini jet in my collection is this World Airways MD-11ER, and I think only five examples were built of the MD-11ER. So I have kind of a pretty rare model. It was released in 2000. It does have a tail seam at the back, which a lot of the more newer models currently do not have. Next to him is a FedEx 767-300. You've probably seen this in a couple of Skippy Town updates, so um, this is really the only exception regarding wide bodies that are active in my airport updates. Latanza Cargo 777 Freighter, this is in the older color, so the uh, more colorful livery. Uh, this is, I think, my first 777 that has an updated mold with the tall nose landing gear. Some people have complained about that, so not really a good thing there. Moving back over, we have a Lufthansa 7478i. This is the retro livery, and I think this model is quite rare. 
and I know many collectors want this, so... Here's an Antonov 124, this is the In Antonov International. It's a little bit dusty there, let me wipe that off. Yeah, some of these models, they just sit in here forever. Um, this doesn't really get cleaned, I should probably do that here after I film this video. But this is my Antonov 124, my only Antonov in my collection. I uh, probably won't get any more, even though Gemini just did release one this month. So... A little bit blocked by uh, part of the shelf is this Alitalia 777-300ER. I have nothing really unique to say about this aircraft, but I just kind of got it because I wanted a 777-300ER for my collection, and I do now, so that's pretty cool. Delta A350, the first release from Gemini Jets, so unfortunately the nose, I think, is not really molded properly, so kind of a bit of a disappointment. I know NG just released it, but I'm not going to replace it just because I think this will satisfy me perfectly well. Moving this off to the side, we have the United 747-400 in these Saul Bass colors. Um, this is, I think, very, very rare. Um, I have quite a few rare models, and this is like the fourth one that I know of that's quite rare in my collection. A little bit of an awkward angle for me to be filming, but this is my Delta 767-300. Uh, this is the Ron Allen colors. Uh, my only model of this livery. I'm hoping to get more, but I actually do have some coming on the way soon, so stay tuned for that. FedEx 7010, you may know that this was broken, I think, in my last collection video, but I have since fixed it with super glue, so it looks pretty good now. Sun Country DC-10, this is my first Sun Country model, and this was my only one for quite a while. I think this is a 2001 or 2 release, it's quite old. Um, I think I did break it at one point, you can kind of see the engine wasn't glued on properly, so it's kind of hanging low. EPS 767-300 freighter with winglets, pretty cool to have this one. And then we have a Swiss A330-200, this is a Gemini Jets 2 model. Currently my only Swiss, maybe I'll get more soon if I'm doing an international airport in the future. And that's pretty much all the planes within my uh, wide body shelf, let's move up to the mixed shelf as I'm going to call it. Alright again, apologies for the poor lighting, I have the uh, lantern all the way over here on the opposite side of the shelf, but there's been quite a few new additions on this in this area, so go and check them out. Start off at the back, we have an Air France A340-300. Uh, I got this quite a few years ago. I think it was like a Valentine's Day gift. Don't ask me why. Um, I've kind of broken it, I think, a little bit because I think one of the wheels is missing under there. And I kind of like the unique landing gear. It's a little bit different than what I see on Gemini's. Uh, not sure if it's a Phoenix mold because that's kind of what it reminds me of looking at it now. So let me know if that's the case. Delta 767-300 in the current livery with winglets. Does have some paint splattering. Um, I got this from Grayland when I was visiting Chicago in 2019. So I'm not really sure if that had anything to do with it being secondhand or whatever, but I really don't know. MD-11 in the house livery. Uh, this is November 211 Mike Delta. This is, I guess this is one of three, I think, MD-11s they had in a McDonnell Douglas house colors. My only house color aircraft in my collection. I'm hoping to get more because I do like these. British Airways 747-400 Landor livery. A hashtag save Landor is trending on Twitter because apparently the Landor livery is not going to be preserved for whatever reason. So hopefully that does get preserved. I'm kind of on that uh, train right now. Um, this is actually not the uh, retro livery release because as you can tell there is no 100th anniversary sticker on the back. And there's a registration so it is a bit of an older release. I thought it looks like Gulf Dash Charlie India Victor India so... Um, it's a bit of an older release. I'm kind of happy to have this, though. Got two DC-8s. We have a DHL over here. I think this is a Dash 73, and then the UPS is a Dash 71. Both of these did come broken in my collection. I think the DHL's tail was off, and then one of the horizontal stabilizers on here was not attached. Got four models sitting on stands. There's one new addition over there. Here's my TWA 717 wearing the American Airlines hybrid colors. I really like this model, wearing that kind of um, livery. I'm not really sure they were even able to get that to happen. Um, got a Canada E310 um, CC150. is missing its wheels. I did put on the uh, door for the uh, nose landing gear, but not really in there right because I think the stub for one of the uh, uh, nose landing gear got jammed in there, fell off one day, and that happened. TWA MD83 Retro. Or no, retro hybrid colors. It kind of looks like it's white there looking at it, but it's just actually a 
a chrome. I know there's one that Waffle Collectibles has that's just of the standard American livery. It's going for $100. You listed another one for $60. I don't think that's going to sell anytime soon. One of my new additions is a Reno Air MD82, I think, or 83. Um, I got the Gulf and Coast Flyer, the Gulf Coast Flyer. Um, I was actually advertised just a standard Reno Air livery, so kind of cool I have this. Another recent addition to the collection, this is a uh, Boeing C-40, so military 737-700 transport plane. Um, I think this is City of Fort Worth, as it would indicate on the nose. You probably can't see it all that well. If I move it down a little bit, you may be able to see some down there. But uh, Eastern DC-8, uh, this is a 60 series. I think the 70 series is just kind of like the 60, but with upgraded engines. So uh, this is my only Eastern model. It is in the iconic hockey stick livery. So you can kind of see the blue cheat lines go all the way up to the tail, and then they extend upwards kind of like a hockey stick. Concord, this is a 2017-ish release. Um, I know Jim and I didn't release another one, so hopefully for those Concord collectors, I hope those guys are satisfied with that. So that's about it for the back of the shelf. Let's move towards the front. I've slightly rearranged things because I've been moving models around to accommodate newer models. We have a United Douglas DC-3. This is a Clay Lacey Aviation example. Not sure where it's at or if it's been preserved still or if it's even airworthy, but it's kind of nice to have this little piece of aviation history in my collection. Another great piece of aviation history is this Pan Am aircraft, my only Pan Am so far. This is a 737-200. I believe it is an X Air Florida example, um, indicated by the registration. U.S. Air BAE-146 or Avro RJ. Uh, this is November 166 Uniform Sierra. Currently my only uh, four jets for short haul aircraft in my collection. Hawaiian A321neo with the terribly oversized engines. I think it's on this side. It's sticking on the ground. Yeah, that's pretty terrible. British Airways A319. I don't know why I have this in my collection, but I do. Uh, one of the main landing gear wheels was not attached. It kind of fell off at one point. I have since glued it back on, so the model sits pretty perfectly now. Alaska E319, the model has sadly been retired, so it has been moved to this shelf, so I guess you can call it the uh, retirement shelf as well if you want. Uh, Southwest 737-700 New Mexico 1, I don't know why this is down here, but it just kind of fits with some of the other older models, because it does have the desert gold tail, the mustard tail, and it has no winglets. I don't know if Gemini will redo this, but I don't think they will, because the only difference has been the tail and the addition of winglets. United CRJ-200 Battleship Gray Livery. It was sitting up here on the top of my shelf at one point, but it has since been moved down here just because it kind of fits with all the other models. Virgin America A321neo. My first A321neo did not give me a good impression because both wings were not glued in. My only Dash AQ400 at the moment is this Lux Air example. Uh, Dash 8s go for quite a bit on eBay. I don't know why, but these things are super rare. Uh, Royal Air Force Lockheed C-130, my only C-130 in the collection at the moment. Uh, it looks to be a, of a longer model, so the fuselage is a bit longer than some of the other ones I have. Delta MD-88, Delta has since retired these aircraft, so it has been moved down to this shelf. We got a couple more Delta examples. We have a DC-6, missing one of the propellers, and then a Delta ATR-72, my only ATR in my collection. Hopefully Gemini Jets is another release of the FedEx ones, because I'd love to have those. Um, it is missing the nose landing gear, though, so kind of a bit disappointing there. I think my cat did that one as well, so he's actually broken two models. Uh, another new edition, kind of. Uh, actually, no, this is in the last collection video, my bad. This is a B1 a bone from Ellsworth, as indicated on the tail, the T-Birds. Um, my first Dragon Wings military model. Actually, no, the, this one over here is kind of military as well. Um, moving up here to the front, Delta 747-400, this is 668, that's like a mid-2010s release. American Eagle CRJ-200, these aircraft have since been retired, so I've moved it down here. And another new addition is a C5M Super Galaxy, who's being crammed in by my giant lantern, so he's not liking me for that. Now let's move on to the top shelf. Jumping in, I forgot to do the uh, front of this middle shelf, the mixed shelf. So we'll start off here. We got the Transworld DC-9 by Aero Classics. Very lovely model. American Transair ATA 757-300 without winglets. My only 753 in my collection. Continental MD-80 in the meatball livery. My only meatball Continental plane. 
I love this livery. It is missing its nose landing gear. America West 757 200, my only America West aircraft in my collection. I love this model. That aircraft is currently flying for FedEx. Alaska 727-100, my only 727 in my collection. This is the Prospector Tail, I think. Guy with a pickaxe. American 757-200 Chrome Livery, 2008 release, November 601 Alpha November, a very rare model. U.S. Airway 757-200, this is in the final livery. I think one of the last U.S. Airways releases that Gemini Jets has done. Northwest Airlines, Airbus A320. Uh, then the final livery from 2008, so right around the time that the merger began. American Airlines 707 in a real metal. This is a real metal, metal release. I know they did a chrome release, but I got the real metal because that's all I could find. And uh, one of my only 707s currently active in my collection. Delta 757-200 in the Delta Flot colors, my only Delta Flot model in my collection. Also one of my first NG 757s. I love the landing gear on this. Wow Air A321neo, as you may remember from the last collection video, the landing gear was broken because um, uh, that was kind of my fault. So you can kind of see the engines. There's a little bit of ground clearance, but not that much. I did fix it, thankfully, so it is super glued in now, and the model looks much better. They're trying to come back as player, and they're moving with the plans even during the current situation. And finally, we have a U.S. Airways Airbus A321. So we'll go ahead and jump back up to the top shelf, and we will continue with the video. You can see just how much better the shelf looks when I actually have a lantern in here, so kind of glad I have it, so finally gets put to good use. Start off at the back. Uh, we have a United 737-800 in the new livery. This is the Gemini Jets release. Delta A321, second release from Gemini Jets, 2018. United 737-800, uh, this is an NG model release. It kind of looks like the nose landing gear is off, but no, it's attached. Um, just wanted to check that. Frontier A321, A320neo by Aero Classics. This is me, the Dolphin. American A321 by Gemini Jets 2018. This is an LUS with the fence tip winglets. Did find one at Greenland that was broken, but did find a second one that was all intact. Frontier E320 uh, by Gemini Jets. This is Griswold the Bear. I don't know if Gemini will ever do it, but if they do, those engines are going to be scraping the ground no, with no questions. JetBlue A321neo by Gemini Jets. This is David Nealman. You can kind of see a horrible paint blur on it. I didn't mention that in the uh, my collection video. Uh, yeah, so this one obviously came with broken wings. Uh, not really happy about that. Delta 737-900ER. This is a Gemini Jets 2019 release. Southwest 737 Max 8. I put it up here because it has been recertified. Hopefully it will start flying soon, and once they do, I will start putting them in airport updates again. Spirit A319, the grayscale slash digital livery. This is by Aero Classics, released at the start of the year. Alaska A320, this is a 2018 release, I think. So uh, once Alaska retires these things, it's also going to go down on the shelf uh, that my Alaska A319 is on. And yes, I know bad lighting because I moved the lantern up here. I'm going to have you in at a bit of an awkward angle so I can show you the next few models. I think this is an Allegiant A320. Yeah, I see registration, so that's my Allegiant A320. Delta A220 first released from Gemini Jets. And we got a couple uh, special liveries here. I actually got a line of four, three Southwest and an American. Uh, over here is a Colorado 1, partially obscured by my big lantern. Um, and then we have American Allegheny Retro A319 with oversized engines, of course. Gotta love those. We got Tennessee 1 here, and whoa, the colors look kind of off because it's probably the lantern. Uh, we got Florida 1, a new addition to the collection. Very happy to have this one. And an American E319 2015 release is an LUS example. Um, one of the fence tip winglets has been shaved off for unknown reasons. That's pretty much all the back of this shelf. Let's move up to the front. Um, we're actually going to be doing the middle because over here, this kind of this kind of is my regional shelf, but because I filled up both the uh, back and the front, I've had to put some of my uh, bigger narrow-body aircraft in the middle here. So if I get more regionals, these are obviously going to get pushed down until I reach the end of the shelf over here. Thankfully, I haven't yet, but I know dang well I probably will uh, once we get to this Christmas. Start off over here, we got a pair of United Express um, Embraers. We have an Embraer 175 in the new livery and an Embraer 170 in the old colors. This one's a Herpa example, my only Herpa model so far. Delta Connection Embraer 170. 
It's focusing on the other models. But this is my Delta Connection Embraer 170, a very rare release. Another rare one is this Delta Connection CRJ700. This is the first release that has the much better landing gear, as you can see, not attached to the fuselage. This one's a newer release, but does have the same mold as this one. This is my United Express Mitsubishi CRJ550 with the new colors. Looks pretty cool. American Eagle ERJ145 in the old colors. I hope to find one in the current livery, uh, but those things go for quite a bit on eBay, so I may be out of luck with that one. have to hope for Gemini to redo it. Um, just bumped into one of my models. I don't know which one it was. Um, Air Canada Express CRJ200. My, um, um, actually, no, it's not my only um, non-American registered uh, regional aircraft. If you count the Lux Air, uh, where is it? Right there. So if you count that one. Actually, no, I think I forgot to mention this one. This is my United Express-8200. So I forgot to mention that one. My bad. Um, I don't think I missed anything else on this shelf. So moving back up to the top. My tiniest model in my collection, and the white melons has gone way off because of this lantern. A lot of shenanigans happening in this video, but there you go. Looks back to normal. My smallest model in my collection, uh, my, excluding the shapeways, of course, is my WestJet Saab 340. I'm hoping to get a mainline WestJet here in the future. And then all of these models up at front, or up in the middle here, those are all new additions since I did the last video. So have American, uh, we got two American 737-800 Heritage liveries. We have the Reno Air on the left and the TWA on the right. American A320, this is my second grab that I got from Waffle Collectibles in one piece, thankfully, with nose landing gear included. Uh, JetBlue A321 by NG Models, got this late because, well, I tried to pre-order it and it did not work. Spirit A321 had a pre-order from another retailer because, well, the retailer I go to did not happen when I did pre-order it. Delta A321 Thank You Livery by NG Models. Very happy to have this. Certainly looks much better than the Gemini one I have over here. Ugh, looks ugly. And then a Swoop 730-7800, my newest model in the collection as of me recording this video. Move up to the front, we've got a Delta 757-200. This is a Gemini 2018 release with winglets and an updated mold. Better nose landing gear, but still a cradle mold. UPS 757-200, this is on the old mold still, this is from 2017, so, yeah, the landing gear looks ugly. It looks better on second-hand models, but not on newer on new releases. FedEx 757-200, this is my NG models, I don't know why it's focusing on the regional aircraft. Let's see if that fixes it. There we go, much better. So FedEx 757-200, this is my NG models, very happy to have this one. Alaska 737-900ER, this has the uh, missing wheel. I got this quite a few years ago, so it's been through quite a lot. Thankfully, that's the only damage it has. Uh, Delta 737-800, this is a 2015 release from Gemini Jets. My first model with the Delta Belly example, which I don't think you can even see from this angle. Uh, we got a pair of Sun Countries here. Both of them are NG models. The one in the back is the older blue livery. Uh, this is a November 2019 release. And then we have the infamous Tide Pod livery. This is from April of this year, so very happy to have both of those. This is from the May releases, my Alaska 737-800 example. I know Gemini did one back when the livery first debuted, but thankfully NG did another release for those collectors that missed out on it, like me. And then my third and last uh, American Heritage livery, the A39, or the 737s at least, uh, my Air Cal example. And we got two Southwest, both of these are very popular, so I'm sure these will probably go for a lot on eBay if they ever show up. Uh, we have a Southwest one, this is the Hart livery, a November 8686 Alpha is a registration. Pretty cool to have that one. And then we have the Canyon Blue one from the same release as the Sun Country Tide Pod. And then the uh, Southwest is from the same release as the uh, Blue Livery Sun Country. Uh, we have a Delta A320 by Aero Classics. Very happy to have this model. Had to get it from a new retailer. Haven't bought from them since, but I hope to go from them again. A pair of Jet Blues, my first Waffle Collectibles models, my iHeart in New York. And then we have a Vetson Blue Livery. Uh, Delta 717 over here. This is a bit of an older addition to the collection. Delta A319 by Aero Classics. Some of you probably don't know the pain I had to go through to get this. I had to order it from a retailer in England, and it took five weeks to get here because of slow shipping and probably due to the current situation as well. But very happy to finally have it. I've had it for quite a few months now, and I've used it in several airport updates. Uh, American, or not American, US Airways A319 Piedmont Heritage. One of the wings is slightly bent upwards. 
I do not think that is zinc rot. Um, I did ask somebody if it was, and they said that it's probably not, and just a defect with the model. This is a 2006 release. I think this is shortly after the whole zinc rot epidemic happened. Um, so I do not have any zinc rot models as far as I know, so hopefully that will stay that way. And we're moving on down to the last two. This is an Allegiant A319 in the new colors with sharklets. As far as I know, no Allegiant A319 has sharklets, so this is a very fantasy model indeed. And then a United A319 in the new livery by Gemini Jets. I heard a few people did get this broken, but thankfully I was not one of them. And that's it. All my collection, about 140-ish models, and then plus whatever more I'm getting for Christmas and thereafter. So I will continue to be adding on to my collection as time goes on, so I will keep doing these uh, biannual videos uh, with my collection. And I'll probably still keep doing the My Collection series as it gives you a detailed look at certain models within my collection. The white balance is fixed, so now I can properly do an intro. Look at that shot. That looks really cool. So that being said, that is the end of the video. Thanks for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.